continuity comes to mind as well, particularly as you talk about mm. people maybe um, having fake sites out there and you would have to recover from that, you know, I would think. So chat a little bit about what auditors can consider <laughs> the continuity space. And also let's yeah. talk about privacy policies. So co continuity is an interesting one because I had a case, this was about five years, five or six years ago as when I was a consultant and uh, they lost their Facebook channel and they'd actually made a bit of a mistake. Facebook was almost their only communications channel. To the extent they actually didn't even have an email address for people to contact them. And they lost their Facebook page for a variety of technical long reasons. But the upshot was they had no recovery. They had no continuity to come back on. So this is a system like any other. Do you have more than one channel? Is there more than one ways to communicate with people? Don't assume everybody's got Facebook anyway, by the way. Uh, that's, a, that's another aspect of communications. Um, and what are you going to do in the meantime? I've seen some organizations, they actually sell via social media. And if that's your sales channel, if it actually goes down for whatever reason, what are you going to do? Um, how are you going to communicate with your customers? Uh, the sales channel's gone down. Cause if it's also your comms channel, then you've actually put all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. All right. Well, we've talked about what our auditors can do. You've given us some great things to think about. And again, the articles are very informative. Uh, what can social media uh, companies be doing to mitigate these risks? I, th I think there's, um, there's a, a few things. I mean, will they ever do a know your customer? I can't see it in some ways unless they're forced to because um, it would interfere with their business model. They just want a lot of people on their sites because fundamentally their business is advertising. Um, uh, the other thing they could do is they could actually go for that certification. I, I don't know why they wouldn't, because it doesn't give secrets away. They could certainly do it for commercial customers, bona fide commercial customers. They could do a lot more about verification um, and more controls over what links people can post online. I'm sure that could be automated to a bigger degree. They are trying. I mean, fair place. They do have to employ a lot of people to try and get rid of fake sites, but there's still millions of them. Uh, they try to get rid of bad actors online, uh, but again, there's millions of those to get rid of. I, th I think in many ways, um, they're trying to automate these processes to get ahead, but I do actually think the bottom line is if you have a know your customer scheme, uh, we would all be able to use it with a lot more assurance. Absolutely. Which brings me to what can we do as employees in these enterprises? What can we be doing to mitigate the risks? I think um, keeping your eyes open. It's, it's amazing how often your employees can actually spot something that's wrong um, and will be looking at the sites. So, you know, if you have an informed set of uh, people, um, and in many ways, you know, we have a multicultural companies everywhere now, and people with different languages will look at different sites. And if you've got people spotting things, uh, for instance, I, you know, I've got a, a colleague from another country, uh, and he spotted that on our a Facebook site in the country he's from, that it was extraordinarily badly run and, and managed to the extent that the, the, you know, the postings were just very poor in his language. Um, and it's something I would never be able to spot myself. So if you can use your own employees as well as to police this um, and also give them good guidance what they should be doing. You don't want anybody bring your name into disrepute on LinkedIn, for instance, uh, or giving away too much information. So there's a whole other angle here we haven't really covered a lot of is what our own employees are doing on social media sites that have nothing to do with us. Um, if they give away too much information, that's um, a hacker's dream, isn't it, for phishing purposes, uh, possibly for another discussion another day. Absolutely. I've seen organizations where, you know, they've asked their employees to keep that information to a minimum because it could mm -hmm. be used as a springboard, you know, for other types of uh, um, social engineering, basically. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And you know, that's common. It does happen. It happens a lot. And these, these guys are very patient, um, the, the, you know, who are trying to get into your systems. They, they'll, they'll track people down. They'll look at all the postings you've done. And they'll start to piece together what they need to do to do their scam. And then the next thing you know, they've crafted a call into your help desk or something because uh, they know you've gone away because you've posted something online saying, I'm in you know, Idaho. And then they'll go, oh, I'm in Idaho and I'm stuck. Uh, you know, and something like this. And they're very, they're very clever people. So the less you post about any of your personal details, uh, the better, really. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. I really thought this conversation was a was a great, informative um, lecture on 
on how we control our social media use. It's it's incredible, and you've really opened my eyes uh, to a lot of things. And I know people will enjoy hearing some of these tidbits that you've given us on how we might be able to do a little bit better. Well, that's all we have time for for this segment. Bob, it was wonderful chatting with you. Thanks once again for your time today. I'm Lisa Villanueva, and this is ISACA TV. Cheers.